Uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, should the ball ages high with Sean here, but to give you another Genshin Impact video, I know it's been about a week since I've done one of these. I wanted to talk about something that is super important for AR 20 to 30 players. I'm going to give you guys five tips all together to take advantage of. The first tip I'm going to give is farm the domains in order to get Ascension materials. These are critical for getting to level 50, 60, and beyond. And pay attention to all the secondary stuff like the dandelion seeds, the stain mass, valberries, star conch, core lapis, whopper flower, shimmering nectars, wind wheel asters, calla lilies, noculus jades, wolf hooks, filamino, mushrooms, small lamp grass, julian chili, glazed lily. And this is just a sample of some of the things that you should be looking out for. So I have a lot of people at level 60. Actually, I have a whole team of people able to go to level 60. The reason I have them at level 58 is because you're going to have five levels of AR where you're actually grinding monsters, grinding out content, grinding out quests. So my recommendation is, unless you're struggling to clear content, get them to X8 for the level cap. Don't max them out all the way because you can get some XP for the characters. So you can see kind of here what I'm talking about. Now, each character has different materials to level up, and this is why you need to be out in the wild farming all the materials as well that you see. If you see ground spawns, go out of your way and grab them because you don't know what you're going to be needing them for. And the second thing I also want to talk about is farming the domains. This is another farm that you have to do in order to get your weapons upgraded. So to get a weapon from 60 to 70, as you see, you're going to need materials on a daily timer. And this is why you have to plan your farming out and also your leyline energy. Because you're going to have different materials for different days. Now this obviously does not apply until you're level 35. You can't actually farm these until you're level 35 because the mobs don't go to level 60 until then. The mist grass, however, you can farm. And very useful tools there. Also... Favanius Warbow uses epic materials, but for somebody like Sucrose, for example, that would be going from 40 to 50, you have a little bit of an easier time with materials. And those you're going to have to farm starting at AR 20. And it's not that bad. Like, we could actually enhance up this weapon quite easily. And just do your planning ahead of time, because each of the domains are only open twice a week, and everyone is open on Sunday to get all the materials. So you have to plan around it and know that you can get 5 AR levels easily within a 3 day span. So plan your leveling out accordingly. That way you're not having to wait days in order to level up a character. The third tip that I want to give for new and intermediate players. Use the Adventurer Handbook. This handbook is super useful for finding the spawn points for mobs. Now keep in mind that if an enemy is level 38, you're not going to be getting the mist grass, but you can still get the mist grass pollen. And you can check each and every single one of these little bosses. This is a really important one for Kaching, as you need the agent sacrificial knife, hunter sacrificial knife. Keep in mind that in order to upgrade the next tier, it's a 3 to 1. So in order to get one inspector sacrificial knife, you're going to need three agent sacrificial knives or nine Hunter Sacrificial Knives. The more that you can farm these on a four hour timer, the better you can do it. And that's not saying go spend your life doing this, because that's a little bit absurd, because as you're going around the world grinding for chests, unlocking content, solving puzzles, you're just going to get a lot of this stuff over time, as long as you're not skipping enemies and just killing them outright. So you can see the Warper Flowers are very useful, and each one drops different things. The Hill Churls are really good because you need masks. And each one of these drops different materials. Some also to pay attention to. The fourth thing that I want to talk about is quest your ass off. Do all of these quests as they become available. Like I have to do the story quest later tonight. Uh, commissions are all completely done. And these world quests are very important. If you see a blue exclamation point on the map, stop what you're doing and go pick it up. These story quests are very important. Also... Keep in mind, once you're above AR-25, you're going to get daily commissions to receive a key. That way you can complete the next quest in the line. So as I hit AR-34, 36, 38, 40, I'm going to have more keys and do more story quests available. And the final thing I want to talk about is making sure that you're doing your daily quests 
And not just the commission. I'm talking about things like the side events, like Unreconciled Stars. You can see that every day you can get some stuff for the Re Unreconciled Stars in the Unknown Star. There are meteoric waves that you have to complete as little side events. And once these all unlock, you can then get a free four-star official. And if you're somebody that has a character, just remember it's a consolation and you're going to get other materials on top of that. Now, I imagine that once you actually complete Star of Destiny, you can actually start doing the Meteorite Remain Salvage Challenge. I imagine this is repeatable because I was not able to get it yesterday, or I'm not sure where to actually get it. But there's another side event that is really important besides doing all of these, which are little events. The test runs will give you a little bit of Primo Gems and other resources. Seize the Day was a login bonus for two weeks. You could get 300 Primo Gems. 50,000 more in other materials just for logging in every single day. And it's pretty useful. But there's another little side event kind of buried in, which is for some reason in the inbox, I'm not really sure. The Stone Harbor Treasure Journal. So by completing this, once you get to 48,000, which is not that hard because you get 2,000, you get 4,000 credits by the end of this. And there's a lot of grace period for this event. I would not be too worried if you can only play like once or twice a day. Because I'm already at 34,000. And by the time I do these two, I'll be over 42,000. And you can see the various rewards. There are 200 Primo Gems on the table. All together. As well as 50,000 more. Just for playing this little event. And it's not even that hard. You can see it lasts until the 20 seconds. So there's a lot of leeway. Even if you can only do... One or two assignments a day. Say you don't have time to do the dailies. You can just log in and do it. The final event is 20 minutes. This one is 15. This one is 10 minutes. This one is 5 minutes. And then you also have the dock. Which is the first one that you unlock. You unlock this one. And if you're watching this video down the road. You might not have these various events. You might have little other side events that will be going on. Always make sure that you claim your mail. And you can see what all kind of stuff you can get. Finally, there's Battle Pass events. Make sure that you're doing the daily stuff all together. Like, you're always using 150 original resin a day. And you're always going out of your way to complete the weekly missions. There is a little bit of a grace with the BP period. So if you know that you're not going to be able to complete something, go ahead and turn one of these in. For example, 50 Wishes, I'm not going to be doing until about two weeks later when the new banner comes out. And you can salvage six meteorite cores, 18 meteorite remains. I'm still not sure exactly how to do these yet, but this is a great way to get BP if you don't feel like doing something right away. Or say, for example, you don't want to spend the resin, the 1200, or you can't spend the 1200 resin, and you don't want to use the fragments in order to get that. You have that option. And make sure you're claiming the rewards. As soon as you get to level 30, you have a choice to get a BP bounty. There's some really good stuff from there. You can get some really powerful 4-star weapons. I wish that they'd give you a 5-star weapon, considering that you're paying money to get the Ghost Nick him. But it's pretty good. If you plan on playing the game, getting all of the Battle Pass rewards are great. Because there's a lot of more to be had once you get into the 40s. Really beneficial, really rewarding. But if you like this video on 5 tips for people around AR 20 to 30, which should help you progress in the game, please give this video a like rating, comment, subscribe, share this video amongst your friends, and as a favorite, check out my other Genshin Impact videos, playlist, Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch, which are all Hollywood Shown on my Instagram, which is Hollywood Shown as God. Super important, as I've said, as you're going around the world, pick up everything. Even if you don't think you're going to need it, you might need it down the road, either for a cooking recipe for a future crafting recipe, or even something that they might change down the road. Leave your comments down below. Let me know if anything I've said has helped you out, or if it's just common knowledge by just experimenting with the game. I hope to put out more Genshin Impact videos in the future. Let me know if you want me to level up a specific character that I haven't focused on, or if you want me to do guides for certain people, like Gene, who I have decently leveled up. Thank you for watching this video. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you again soon for another Genshin Impact video.
www.youtube.com slash Hollywood Show now. Subscribe, bitches!